Welcome back to Sean's 600 pound life or Lucas's 600 pound life where I give my account as somebody who was 605 pounds about what they're doing about how exactly they might have got here all that and uh, usually I say some pretty fun stuff because I don't have much of a filter but uh, let's see what Lucas has going on in his life. Texas got another one. Porky puppy. Alright, so we start the episode with Lucas here playing pocket pool, like that one creepy kid in the back of your high school classroom, but alright Lucas, let's be careful here. I dread waking up in his body every morning. Because each day is just too difficult for me to face. My body hurts, and the stuff I have to go through just to have a normal day is painful on every level. Also, his shirt is tore to hell. Looks like he got like in a fight with a bobcat outside of Bob Evans or something. And so I live in despair. At the size that I'm at now, I can still get around, but it's difficult. I feel pain in all parts of my body, and I'm exhausted all the time. Knees, back, ankles, jaw, because you chew too damn much. Uh, everything hurts. You use the muscles a little bit, it don't feel good. You add all that extra pressure, your knees are going to be destroyed. Also, I can see this guy's nipples, they're huge. My parents built an outdoor shower for me, but I can't get the water to go all over my body because I'm too big. So that doesn't work for me. You mean rain? Are you doing a rain dance outside? And the only shower I can fit in is at my sister's place. So I have to go there to get cleaned. Stepsister? I'm too big for chairs, hallways, doors, bathrooms, toilets, my bed. I take offense to the hallway one. We are not too big for hallways, okay? Toilets, yes. His nuts are guaranteed to be in like a crippler crawl's face or something. I'm too big for bathtubs. My family has a compound here in Condor, Texas. Basically, they're just little buildings that we purchase and then everybody has their own little personal space. What? We have a chubby commune? Oh, I've never seen this one. So I sleep in a building next to my sisters. And then my parents live in the bigger unit. But my life has become just one challenge after another. By the time I get to my sister's front steps, my breathing has gotten pretty bad. Stairs, my old arch nemesis. Yeah. Everything's harder, life sucks, it's a very negative place to be, but hopefully he does well. My muscles are burning. I feel like I'm moving a whole pile at the line of scrimmage in football, but it's just a fat on my body. But that's not even the main event yet. Get in a shower, that's like a workout by itself. Shower's the main event. That pocket pool thing he was doing at the start must have been pre-game for him. I'm thankful I can still clean myself, but I can picture a time where I can no longer do that. And it's a pretty yes, scary daddy. thought. Every part of my body is heavy. So lifting my arms to clean myself is just as hard as lifting my legs to walk. And that pain from the weight of my belly pulling down on my legs and back it's a lot. Am I the only one who smacks his own ass in the shower and says, like, I poppy chulo? That's gotta be just a me thing. I think I'm the only straight guy that does that. I get anxiety about slipping over and falling. By the time I get done, but I still have to dry off and get dressed. If you ever assume that position in the shower, there's probably two people in there, and or, and or I probably made a terrible life choice that day. 
I do it sitting down because there's no way I could stand for it. And then the exertion from that can be difficult. I'm going to start sweating again. Yep. But I sweat pretty much all the time anyway. What was that little towel move? Like the slingshot sack or something? I make up names for everything. Once I'm dressed, then it's time to move on to something much happier. Something that brightens my day every day of my life. Food. Oh shit, we're wearing the same style shirt. I didn't see that coming. This I'm getting trolled. Food is the highlight of my day. It always gives me something to look forward to. And when I'm cooking, I make a lot of it because I have to feed my sister's kids. But also because the more food there is, the longer I can stay in the place that food takes me to. Food is my happy place and kind of as always has been. Another guy trying to find the ticket to like naughty Narnia with some Nutella or something. But he's busting a hell of a sweat. You get sweat in the pancakes over here. It's been there for me ever since I was a little kid. Flashback. I was born at Connor Regional. I don't remember exact details about my weight, height, or anything like that. I just do know. Seven pounds, one ounce, 21 and, 21 and a half inches. I remember mine. My mom says I was a difficult baby. The way my mother describes it was everything was stressful for me. And I think the reason was because the household growing up was very chaotic. I... And that kid on the right's eating. And he's getting a little chubby by that point. So I don't really put that on him. Because I don't think kids really have a choice. It's going to be your parents' control, right? I have six brothers and sisters. But I'm the only one with a combination of parents that I have. So all my... Damn, mom was really getting them frequent flyer miles, huh? Siblings are either half or step-siblings. Tables. Most of the time, my parents were unhappy parents. And they broke oh, up oh. and got back together a few times. So it never felt stable. They separated after I was born. That's when she met my sister's father. And she conceived my two little sisters who are twins, Jessica and Megan. Just out of curiosity, how many fathers are we talking about here? Is this like a junk food Jerry Springer experience going on or something? So the twins have a separate dad. Even though they refer to my dad as their dad a lot of the time, he's actually their stepdad. In fact, I remember being up there at the hospital and I remember seeing my dad there at the window. He was waving at us and he was showing the girls off, but... Really? Because my mom still to this day tells the story about how pissed off she was at my dad because he was eating pizza waiting for her in labor. Also, me and my brothers were scheduled to be born all on the 6th, and she didn't want three boys born on 666, so she ran up and down stairs so my little brother came on the 2nd. Their dad wasn't there, and I was just like, I don't know how to handle this, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so that was weird, but after that, when the girls came home, I had a tough time with them at first. I guess I was... Also, those pancakes are freaking like whiter than me. That does not look cooked very well. But uh, Google what pancake mix smells like. You'll get a funny answer. I was just jealous of them. Jealous that they got more attention than I did. So what I did when I felt that way is to go eat. And when I was eating something good, I could just focus on how good it tasted. And that's how I got myself to feel better. I don't think my parents watched what I ate. I don't recall if they ever cared about how much I weighed when I was a kid because I was neglected. I give my mom a pass on that one because I'd just take a whole damn box of brownies and hide them somewhere, but she knew I was overweight. Come on. I didn't understand at first. I was questioning myself, you know, do my parents love me? Do they care? Am I doing something wrong? I don't know if that contributed to how everything feels. I just know I didn't want to be around my parents when I was a young kid because I that's sad. Man, I always felt extremely loved. I was always around my parents. I would go with my mom to the grocery store just because I was afraid she would get lonely if one of us kids wasn't there. Just, I don't know, it was just stressful. Through all the struggles that he's had through his life, I guess it started when he was four. He had two sisters all at once. And he was the object of our attention until twins came along, newborns. And now he... Everybody knows the youngest sibling gets the most attention. My older brother hated me. 
I hated my little brother. It's just how it works, guys. He wasn't getting hardly any attention that he was used to, and he had to learn to deal with that. The life was stressful, family was stressful. School was pretty stressful. Elementary school, I was made fun of for being big. The teachers didn't like me. I think it was mostly because I think growing up I was just very hyper and I always had a hard time focusing. When really? I was a peer mediator. Every teacher pretty much liked me. And they would just call my mom and say, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do if this boy loses his temper. He's effing huge. Whenever I felt neglect from my mom and dad, or I had teachers that just didn't like me. If I was sad or scared, I always ran to eat food. Food made me feel full. It made me feel satisfied. And it made me feel happy. Like I didn't need to be sad anymore. And yes, it made me gain weight. When I was 10. Okay, so the, he has such an unhealthy relationship with food, and it seems like the only, the way he's talking about it, he very much likes the food, he just doesn't like to cook it, apparently, because these pancakes are half uncooked. Ten years old, I weighed 160 pounds. Now, he didn't overeat, but he would have seconds. And What the fuck do you call that, lady? He's overeating if he's getting second. I would always compete with my brother if he wanted to. I needed three. I had to be big dog on campus. And that was when it, we started noticing that he was very hyper child. Physically, he was hyper. We had to put... He has a street shark. I had that same thing. Oh, man. Nobody remembers street sharks. Locks at the tops of the doors because he would sneak out at the age of three. And I would find him on a busy highway with people going 90 miles an hour three years of age. Terrify me. I'm gonna judge your parenting skills on that one, lady. There's no way he should be able to play in traffic here. But, uh, did I run? Yeah, I ran away once. But, uh, I called a girl, and then she called the cops, and they brought me home, and I said, Mom, I didn't call them, because she told me she'd wear me out until they got there if I ever did. Fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade was at the private school. I felt out of place. I felt like you know, maybe I didn't belong. I did look to food for comfort. And so I do recall going from like age 10 to age 12, 13. I did gain about 100 pounds close to it. So. And he's a Boy Scout. I was a Boy Scout and they gave us these little necklaces that you'd get one bead every time you went to like elementary school wearing it. I had one bead. Everyone else's necklace was full of shit. You weren't catching me dead in that thing. And the one bead? was a pity bead. Going on to junior high, I weighed about 250 pounds, and it was just increasing over time. I think mm -hmm. I was 11 or 12 years old. My mom and dad got back together. They did get married, and then... Hey, we're on a boat. Pirates of the calories. I think the next year, eighth grade, they divorced. That was really, really difficult on me. Oh, poor guy. After the divorce, I wanted to hate somebody and I wanted to love someone. I didn't know who to choose. I did turn to food to ease the stress. That's kind of shocking because usually in divorce, little boys always pick their moms. Me and my brother Lucas, when I was younger, there we didn't really have much of a relationship. I guess I could say that Luke kind of got left on the back burner a lot. I do remember when my mom and stepdad split, it hurt him really bad. My mom and my stepdad, they've had at least three separations in our lifetime. Literally can't. Three? Wasn't the second time enough? They knew it didn't work twice? But I always feel terrible for kids in divorce. Like, it always kind of damages them, messes with them a little bit. Get married again if they happen to divorce in the state of Texas. It's, <laughs> they've reached their limit. But basically anything that's emotionally traumatic for Lucas causes him to binge eat and not take care of himself and it, it really does affect us emotionally the old emotional ego strat i don't know uh i don't think i ever was an emotional eater but maybe i don't know i'm still figuring me out half of the time my weight increased to 300 pounds when i hit high school that's when i started playing football and my coaches were my impact factor they ones that pushed me Going into sophomore year, I weighed close to 400 pounds. And these coaches told me, hey, if you want to be playing football with us, you got to lose the weight. And I was like, there's no way his knees could survive that. Because a three-point stance 
it's a lot harder than you'd think. Like our coach used to come around and kick our hands out from under us to make sure we weren't putting too much weight on our hand, like a pain in the ass. Like I have to do it. I don't remember him overeating. When he played football, he was a, he was big. And it's so big the coach made him lose weight to play football. And he did. Does anyone else hear the dog whining in the background? You guys might want to take a film break here. Yeah, he did that very successfully. He dropped 100 pounds. He had his mindset to play football. The doctor gave him a diet to stay on, and he'd done it. He'd done good. Look at you, stud. He looks pretty good coming out of high school, right? He's kind of killing it right here. He was a go-getter. Slay clean. Junior year, I lost 75 pounds. I went from 375 down to 300. And then on to my senior year, I dropped another 50 pounds. And I was around 250, close to 240. And I had never felt better. It was the best time of my life. I bet he felt great about himself. Like, I never had that experience in high school. I dropped some weight in middle school once, but that was it. Ready for prayer. God is good. God is great. Let us thank you for our food. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That just might be the cutest thing I've ever seen. That kid's adorable. But then football season ended and we were no longer required to work out. That's when the success turned into a failure. I didn't stay on my regimen and I just gained it all back. That's when I got into my addiction to video games as well. I... Oh no, I had that happen once when I was 19. I had a girl break up with me because I played too much damn video games. But I was top five in the world for about a year straight at that video game. I remember graduating weighing about 320 pounds. After high school, I moved in with my brother in Corpus Christi, and I started working at a pizza place while going to college. And in that pizza place, I would be given free pizza almost every night. Um, I had a buddy that managed a Papa John's, and I used to just go hang out in the manager's office. Sometimes I was bored. I would just go deliver pizzas, and I didn't work there. And it became a downward spiral after that. I started gaining a lot of weight. Going to college, I went from 300 to 400 pounds, and then 500 pounds going into my 20s. So I was actually really close to graduating, but my dad wanted me to drop out of school to learn a trade, and he's been a machinist most of his life. So I tried to go into machining. Problem was, it's not something I really enjoyed. How much did you enjoy the pizza place, though? That's kind of a fun place for us 500 pounders. What he wants to do, he's not being able to do it. He likes video games, and it's, and I guess that's fine. But uh, I grew up in the latter part of Vietnam War. In our mind frame, you can't push reset and start your new game. You had to live your life. Wow, having a dad that's a Vietnam vet probably puts it different, because he, he would have to have PTSD, all the horrors and stuff they saw over there. All right, y'all ready? We're gonna come clean up, and then I'm gonna start school, okay? Okay. Let's start school, let's start cleaning up. My next job was three or four years later. I was working doing grocery delivery. It was working at first, and then things got really stressful, and it just got, it got really difficult to handle depression and anxiety. I think we should try to get away from food, because we keep getting jobs in the, like, food fields, we're never going to lose any weight. That is just like shooting yourself in the foot and then wondering why it hurts. And so I had put my 30-day notice in for being discharged medically, and I crashed. And fast forward to now I'm in my 30s, and I'm at 600 pounds. Okay, Junior, I want you to go get your books over here and you know, get set up right there, okay? Grace, I want you to go get your books and set up right here, too. Make sure you bring the pencils, too, okay? This guy's kind of experience is a little like mine, but he lost weight in high school and kind of killed it. I just said, screw it. I'm not going to make it to 30, but same, about the same age when we started to try to figure things out. And I know that my weight is contributing to my depression, and I still can't stop eating. Because food is one of the only things that makes me feel good. I can't do this. Yes, you can. I have to clean it up, okay? So I'll do that one. At this point, I can't really get a job, or not a normal one anyway. Thankfully, my He's always done, like, physical jobs, delivering pizza, going and being whatever, like uh, somebody who gets groceries, so he's walking around. 
you're not going to be able to do that at this size. It's going to be downright impossible. My sister has been able to find work for me to do. What does this mean? Uh, let me read 21. Okay. Patty Pig picks peppers to sell at the market. Help Patty track the per peppers. Oh, okay. okay. Got it. That's easy. Well, my job today is I help uh, teach my little niece and nephew with homeschool, and then I also babysit them whenever they, you know their parents need me to babysit. I'm actually shocked that he's even able to sit at this bench for the length of time he is, because you would think his back, knees, all that would be on fire, like he just couldn't sit there that long. I had gotten the idea to employ my brother homeschooling my kids, mostly to help him kind of financially, but seeing him spending time with his niece and nephew, it makes me... Why is there a grocery? <laughs> Your blackboard for schooling officially is just covered in food. That's all it is at this point. Me happy because beforehand they didn't spend any time together, but he's very, very smart. He retains almost everything he learned in school. So yeah, he's he's the perfect candidate to teach them. He had me in honors courses until I just got suspended too much and stopped doing anything. This letter, Grace. What's this letter say? D. There you go, G. D. All right, you want to get the books for me? Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Pretty light. Your mom's going to be home soon, so y'all go ahead and watch some TV, okay? Howdy, Bubba. Never forget. Hey. All right, so we'll go shopping at the grocery store. So far... He blows everyone out of the water when it comes to activity levels on this show. I haven't been to a grocery store on my own for four or five years. At this size, the thought of falling over in public it's about enough to keep me from ever going anywhere. I never had any fear of falling over. I think that's a little just irrational. But there's curbside pickup. You did grocery orders. Like, you should know you don't exactly have to walk into the store. So you put a thousand pounds on the driver's side alone and don't worry about the suspension? Yeah, F the trade in value of this car. Yeah, let's grab some of these. Ooh, get those. Cinnabons, all right, let's uh... Once I'm there, I can lean on a cart or ride in a motorized cart, but I wouldn't be able to come here without Megan. Can you uh, grab... I love Cinnabons. We had a girl in high school we called Cinnabon. I'll let y'all figure out why we called her that. Grab some bacon, uh, a couple of them. This one? Yeah, let's grab out two more of those. Even though I'm living with my family basically almost for free, I don't like being dependent on other people. It makes me feel weak. Let's grab one of each. And as much as I love my family and I'm grateful for He's gonna do like a taste test or something. He needs one of each flavor. For them. I know that being dependent on them is part of the problem. You want any chips? Yeah, let's grab a couple of these. But also because of the emotions that go along with living with my family are stressful. And as much as I appreciate their help, it's difficult. I don't tell my Also, just being like in that position, just creeping around the entire store would make me very uncomfortable to have my crack out the whole time family of those because I don't want them feeling like they're responsible for it. Where I live today has been a big factor of increasing weight. There's a lot of my strength. Jeez, this guy's got to be dehydrated. You see how much he sweats? Everywhere. He was dripping sweat in the start of the show. Stress and anxiety comes from them. You know, whenever they stress me out or if they fight or if they or argue with me or something like that, I have to go and eat something and I hate it. Ah, uh, yes. The Rage Reese's Cup. Been there. A little temper tantrum with a Twix. That seems to be uh, what us 600-pounders like to do. 
such a city. Well, that's Sonic. I've been there enough to know what them damn bags look like, because I would get a large blizzard and punish that thing. Cookie dough, add peanut butter. Poor puppy, you think you're gonna get a bite? You're sorely mistaken. You're on the wrong TV show, buddy. I'm not gonna be able to do anything tonight. That was a lot of walking for you. <clears throat> Seeing my brother trying to do things for himself and being in so much pain, it really breaks my heart. Us watching him, my mom, my dad especially, it's heartbreaking. You know, I can already tell, or I already believe, he's going to be a success. He's that much more physically active than anyone. Like, he blows me out of the water where I was at the start of mine, because I was way more lazy than that. I didn't want to walk around everywhere and none of that. Breaking. It's kind of devastating, almost. All right, good night, bub. Given my current living and income situation, I don't see myself being able to get out of this without outside help. I know that how I'm living right now can't go on. Ooh, a little strip tease. He must have like a webcam show. How's he getting money, right? He's a cam girl. Oh my god, I figured it out. For much longer. I wake up hopeless and desperate for something to change. This feels like... I kind of just want him to change them shorts because it looks like there's a booty, like a booty stain in the back of that thing. This is my last chance to turn my life around. Otherwise... I'm stuck in this storage shed, waiting to die. Did I not realize somebody just put him on storage wars in the storage shed? Oh, he really will die. No wonder it's so hot he's sweating so much. It's a damn storage shed. So when was the last time uh, you actually weighed yourself? Ignorance is bliss, lady. Mind your business. Also, still the same shorts. The last time I weighed myself... I think I was 545 pounds, and that was back in 20, 2017. You haven't stepped on a scale since? No, I don't, I don't want to. I'm scared. I don't, hey, I don't blame you. Like, I lost all that. First of all, scales get expensive when you need the ones that go up that high. And then, secondly, he already knows he's 545 pounds. So you really just want to kind of block it out because you hit 600, you think, oh, that's bad. 500 seems a little more okay because there's a TV show called My 600 Pound Life and you don't want to be in that range. That weight, right? And then I put it all back on in a matter of a couple months. I haven't stepped on a scale since I weighed 135. Definitely done that a few times and she definitely ain't 135. So, uh, she packed it right back on. I feel very nervous about what that scale is going to say because it's almost been five years since I stepped on a scale. You can step up on the scale. I'm hoping that. I think I went seven years in between, but that's not out of the norm. Some people never figure out they're up above 500. Some people go from like high school to just never know, like never, never land of weight loss. I haven't gained any weight. That I'm still somewhere in the mid 500s. And that I'm not worse off than I've been thinking this whole time. Yahtzee! That's 620 almost. Oh well, no. Like I've said before, we round down when we're that big. That's a cool 615. We're we'll call it 615. Your weight is 619. You can step off. Hello. How y'all doing? It's Mr. Take your bitch. Take her on a trip. Okay. All right, sir. How you doing? Good. You must be Lucas, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Where are you coming from? We come from Conroe, Texas. Bucky's claims another one. At least he's in Texas, though, so we don't have to travel or anything. Isn't McCain, Texas, the fattest, like, state in Texas? State Texas. State in Texas? What am I on? Yes. All right. And you are over 600 pounds, huh? Yes, sir. And you're only 32 years old, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. So you've been overweight for a while. So you're the heaviest in the family? Yes, sir. Nah, we got a cargo container out back. That guy's about 900. I just stay in like the uh, good old storage shed out front. Man, it's mostly are you working? 
No, sir. I can't work. How long you haven't been working? It's been over a year now. And before that, what kind of job you were doing? I was a pizza delivery driver. That's... Are we not going to tell him about the cam girl website you're on? Because uh, as soon as I can do it, I'm getting the hell off YouTube. I'm going to WikiFeet, guys. I'm about to get paid. It's unfortunate for your situation. And it got to the point that you couldn't do it? it? Got to the point I just couldn't do it anymore. So what is going on with your eating habits? My eating habits is more related to my stress and my depression. And when I feel stressed or anxiety, I eat. I tend to eat when I feel... Here's the thing. And I, I like to talk about this a little bit. But people who struggle with that kind of stuff... You're your own worst enemy. It's so hard to get out of your own head, and I guarantee somebody's beating themselves up right now and just thinking about all the things they've done wrong in life. If you keep looking behind you, you're never going to see what's in front of you. So just don't sit there and just beat yourself up. Get out of your own head and just move forward. Be happy every damn day and just pretend every day's a fresh start. That is in the snack, and then like during meals, I tend to overeat. Could it be that you convince yourself that this is stress making you eating? I, I try to convince myself to just find different ways, but I tend to become addicted to, to certain things like video gaming or watching TV, sitting down and doing nothing. Just Video games is very hard to uh, get away from. Like I said, I've had an issue with that one before in the past, and it was kind of funny though. Because I would just go on, I'd like, I think I was 19, I'd go on there and just chat up a bunch of people, and then I'd get like six girls to change their name to some version of mine, and then invite them all to the same lobby and watch them fight. It was funny. Just trying to escape those things that cause me stress and anxiety. So it becomes very, very difficult. That's not really an answer to what I ask. But when you give in and justify your reading, where do you do it? You eat at home or you eat out? I usually eat at home for the most part, but sometimes I do go get fast food. All right, so what do you do all day? Uh, I most... But he can't drive, so somebody has to be go getting him the food, and I imagine that's exactly where Dr. Now is heading right now. Because you saw the damn pancakes he meant, or he made. They were not very damn good. I help out with the family by babysitting and uh, teaching uh, my sister's kids, and but most of the time I'm sitting down and... Uh, very, my activity is very like scarce. I don't do it very much, and it's very, very, very little that we move around. So, dude, he moves around a hell of a lot more than I did. But kids and all that. I mean, growing up, my mom did daycare, so there was always a kid that needed a bottle or something. So I'm cool with that. I, I like the whole daycare aspect of it. I think that probably gives him some level of fulfillment in his life. Choose to overeat, or does somebody push you to overeat in the family? I, I tend to overeat myself. I tend to choose that. I, I don't. I don't think anybody really enables me. Shut up. We're gonna have to spin this to something else, right? Okay. So I tell the doctor now. I'm training to be a competitive eater. That's what I'm working on. It's just me. Is he telling me the truth? Um. Yes. Mostly. Yes. You hardly. Mostly, huh? We already established a dynamic that the family feeds him. So. Are you all doing anything to help him to we, lose we weight? We do. We have been trying for years to, to help him. Do you all bring him food to eat, too? I, I, I'll bring him lunch sometimes when he's watching. Deflect. Deflect, deflect, deflect. You just, anything to not take accountability for this. Watching my kids, yeah. So you think you are helping him to bring him some food? Or is that because you're showing that you like him or you love him? It's because I'm not going to feed my kids and not, you know, um, have food for my brother. And I don't know. I was 600 pounds. If you gave me a lasagna, I'd probably think you're trying to give me a little love hug. And if he's happy, he keeps doing what you want, right? Um, no. I'm just trying to make sure he has what he needs. All right. So, Lucas, do you have any goal in your life? Goal? Yeah. I, I would like to become an IT tech, I would like to get back into working again. That's, That's a nice little goal there. For me, I want to be on the Chub Hub. One of my goals, uh, but it's just, unfortunately, I don't, I can't work to make the money to go to school. I can't, 
afford uh, online classes or anything like that. And I don't want to ask my family for the money to do something like that. I think there's this magic thing called student loans, which suck, but also would help you out in this circumstance. Okay. And what are you willing to do to change all that? I'm willing to change everything, sir. Whatever uh, it takes. Whatever it takes to the point where even if I have to come up with different habits to to go through my anxiety, to go through my stress. To, to be able to do Your entire life's going to have to change, not just your shorts at this point. But the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. I know I sound like a broken record, but everyone can redeem themselves. To deal with it properly instead of just going to something that comforts me. All right, so what we need to do is try to change your eating habit. Yes, sir. So the first step is going to be that you have to discipline yourself. Yes, sir. Okay. What I want to do is give you some stuff that I want to start reading those. And also we're going to give you some exercise. So I'm going to bring you some instruction. I want you to follow those things up. And I'm going to give you... Wouldn't it be funny if Dr. Now brought a book back and he's like, this is the Hunger Games. I want you to practice like you're hungry every damn day four weeks and if you do that i want you to lose 30 pounds in one month and stick with the healthy eating habit if you do that and then, then we're going to be able to help you out but if you come back and you haven't lost any weight then there's not much we can do let me see that i think this is what's going to help you drop the weight really fast mom and i are doing this with you okay she may not be able to do the intermittent fasting but she's definitely you know how many people told me they were going to do this damn diet with me? You know how many actually did? Zero. Nobody wanted to do it when it came down to how much it sucked to cut out carbs. Only doing the diet. I didn't want to say, oh, no, my sister's the one that you know, gives me food. Yes, on a regular basis, we do kind of eat pretty bad. But I feel like my family doesn't really enable me. It's more of me. Because I secrets treachery against doctor now i will not stand for it damn it call him back in here you must confess in front of him I can make my own decision so i put it more on myself we gotta, okay. throw, we gotta throw out all that stuff <laughs> more and they just went to the grocery store too and bought one of every flavor of oreo because he said get one of each right that's a lot of damn oreos isn't it <laughs> no more temptation so Oh, my kids are gonna hate me. Okay, come on. Oh, well. <laughs> he said, oh, well, I ain't gotta deal with them anymore. That's your problem, lady. The first few weeks of doing Dr. Now's diet and exercise program, basically getting control of my eating habit. It's been a pretty big adjustment. It definitely probably sucked the big one, but he's such a nice guy, man. He's so good with kids, and he's just, he's a really good guy. I'm really hoping and pulling for him. It's been a very tough challenge. There were many struggles that I've encountered. The good news is, most of the time, I have the kids to keep me busy. Again! Yay! And I've been trying to throw myself into that and trying to push myself to do more with them. We're going to have P.E. Y'all ready for P.E.? We're going to... Ooh, a little bit of P.E. time. Like, I, I imagine if you homeschool kids, there is a P.E. part of it, right? We're gonna do jumping jacks and we're gonna play with the ball, okay? I'll meet you guys outside, okay? Days when I have to watch the kids, it's actually difficult to get everything done for Dr. Now that I'm supposed to do in terms of exercise. Mm, good day to do some recess. I would think chasing around some kids would be perfect exercise for you. So this week I'm trying to combine it to where I get some exercise during the homeschool hours. So today I'm taking them outside with me and getting my exercises in that way as part of their PE class. Come on, we're going to do jumping jacks. You know how to do jumping jacks? I think. No shot, 600 pounds, he could do jumping jacks because he makes me feel like a pile of shit if he can do that. I know I couldn't. Like this? You like that? Can you do it for me? <laughs> that was pretty good. Try it again. OK? Watch me, sister. I'm going to try it too, OK? OK? Holy shit, I can't believe he can do that. Also, that little boy said, watch me, sister. That's probably the greatest line ever. Really hard on me. We're gonna do 10 of those, right? One, two, two three, four, five, six. And it's going good. Eight, nine, 
Ten. Yay. Damn, buddy. How about a full show here? If I pay, can I get a private dance out back? Can one of y'all give me the chair over there? Play catch now? Yeah, we're gonna play catch now. Catch. Hang on. I got this thing. We're gonna have to stand up for this one, okay? Okay. It's very hard for me to get up. I think it's a bit. Oh, lady, throwing it straight at the nuts. She's going for the kill. She must be mad. You must. You need to play a little more kickball with this girl so she don't aim right there anymore. But I guess technically, if you're 600 pounds, you're already playing kickball all the time with your thighs. Cool down. These days, I've been more tired than ever. This is good exercise, but it's a good kind of tired that feels like I've earned it. Yeah. Are you okay? I'll be fine, man. Shut up, kid. Like, he's, he's so bad right now. Are you really talking to me right now? I just did 10 F and jump and jacks and played catch. That's a lot, though, for a 600 pound person. So, way to go, my man. And those kids are freaking adorable. Just had to catch my breath. I'll be alright. <sighs> to get to the goal he gave me of losing 30 pounds this month. My uh, usually it's hard to do it at first, man. That adjustment from going from eating at whatever you want. To like actually dieting is tough, man. And they got a brand new stove, so they've got more money on this like chubby commune than I thought. Mommy's trying to remember how to set this up. <laughs> My sister has been showing me support, and she's the one pushing me more than anyone to do Dr. Nell's program. Serving size is three ounces. Um, 4.5 ounces for nine pieces of uh, chicken. So how many? Uh, that's a little rough, but I mean, if he's weighing everything out, it's better than I ever did. I was just rounded up and made sure I was like, I was like, yeah, let's just add 100 to whatever I think this is just to be safe. How many calories is that? That's 167 calories. Are you good with that? You that should get, be pretty you can good. Can afford that? Yeah. Lucas has been doing really well. I'm super proud of him. I know how hard it is, and seeing him overcome that is really great to watch. I'm proud of him, too, but we have got to get him some new shorts, because those things have to smell like a back room at, like, the red light district in Amsterdam or something, because they are nasty looking. In fact, he's been doing so well that he's getting better almost a little too fast for me, because it means that pretty soon I'm going to need a new babysitter and... You selfish harlot. I can't believe she even said that. She's worried about the damn babysitter while this man's fighting for his life? Oh, you just got on my shit list, lady. A new homeschool teacher. I'm still trying to figure out what move I'm going to make. And it won't be easy to find someone who's as much of a natural for the job as Lucas has been. <sighs> I'll give her that. He's good with the kids, but that's a wild thing to say. It's been really great having him in that role. Oh, that looks awesome. It does. It looks really good. So, I've known all along it is just temporary. And now it's actually happening. Is there a reason we're eating out of a dog bowl here? And we'll have to make some adjustments. But, you know, we're all really eager for him to get better. And seeing it happen before our eyes is really exciting. Okay. Maybe she's not as bad as I thought, but the way she started that out, I thought she was just a terrible human being. First appointment a month ago, I weighed 619. You can step on the scale. Okay. And Dr. Now told me to lose 30 pounds. So if I did that, I should be under 589 right now. And I really hope that I am because I can't take a big failure right now. If he stuck to the diet the way he was acting and the way he showed us, I don't think he should have any issue with this. But those are some pretty damn short shorts, though. He's kind of letting it all hang out. Your weight is 590. Okay. <laughs> yes. Way to go. <sighs> We're going to go to room number five. Room number five? Gotcha. Okay, off. Get you and Goose back there, this lady from Top Gun with these shades on. By one pound. And I think that's close enough. So you need to study the diet a little closer to make sure you don't eat sugary things. And as happy as I am to see your progress, the reality is you haven't been sticking to just 1,200 calories. Because... 
30 pounds in a month still good. We, we gotta give him his credit here. But yes, I only ever lost 35 in a month, so that was my best month. I could have done better, okay? I did lazy keto, which involves eating a whole bunch of fatty meats and not counting calories, just getting rid of carbs. Uh, you would have lost three times what you did if you had. So nobody in the family is enabling you anymore? No, sir. Everybody's... We've, been, we've been very strict, like my mom and I are. Shut up, you babysitting bull. Oh, oh, I don't want to call her anything too mean. Both on the same diet as Lucas, so I feel like it helps him to stay motivated and it also helps him to stay disciplined. Um, and it's been challenging, but you know what? I'm very proud of him and what he's accomplished so far. Well, I'm, glad to... I'm proud of him too. I'm a little mad at you, but you guys told me that I was completely too mean in the last one to the new husband, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut on this one. See the progress being made by all of you, and that you all are working to change your dynamic of a household. So how is your depression? Now that you are some weight, do you feel better? I feel, actually, it's been pretty great. Uh, I still have moments where I struggle, but I've been feeling a lot better overall. Need to get you in the right mindset. Get you on that old Tinder cardio game. Probably get you feeling like a new man. So you're in the right track. But the reality is, if you did the 1,200 calorie diet, then you would have lost three times that. So what I want you to do is show me that you're going to at least stick with what you're doing now by losing another 60 pounds over the next two months. If I think very reasonable but he still did good i'll give him his props he did 30 pounds in a month is still freaking good guys if you do that then i'll know you're serious and i will approve you for weight loss surgery you think you can do that oh i can do that sir okay all right i'm encouraged with your see the look in his eyes though i don't have any doubt in my mind that this guy's gonna friggin' kill this thing and i needed a positive one i've been starting to get down in the dumps with all these people failing progress so stick to it and then uh, we'll see what we can do with you, okay? Yes, sir. All right, so we'll see you in two months. Yes, yes sir. sir. If you need it. Actually, when I did the Steven Asante episode, I sunk into a state of depression. That guy was that damn bad. <clears throat> I'll see you later, Megan. Hey, Kimberly. Are you ready to get some of that weight off? Mm -hmm. Sit down right here. There you go. This lady's coochie does curls. You see how ripped she is? A little bit of hammer, like hammer curls for her hoo-ha or something. That's a, she's scary, man. She might put you in a damn headlock. You better get to it. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna do some warm-up exercises with your shoulders. Okay. We're gonna do some small baby circles, just some small ones. So we're gonna count to twenty. Okay. All right. So whenever you're ready, just take your arms out. All right. We're gonna do the baby ones first. Yes. Okay. Just a little bitty ones. Just one. Drop down and get your eagle on, girl. Two, three, tell me when you feel a burn. She burned me. 18, 19, now we're gonna go forward, we're gonna do some big ones. Okay. Big, one, one two. two. Pushing myself physically is really hard, but at the same time, it feels good. It takes. This guy is by far probably one of the better ones on the show. Straight out the gate, that Brandon guy killed it though, but he's definitely doing really good. It takes me back to my high school days when people looked up to me for how strong I was. Okay. So I'm gonna try to get your arms out in front of you, so we'll see. There you go, kind of a little bit far forward. Two, go down. Okay, three. Let's go to about right here and keep tension. Isn't it kind of crazy though how your mental state affects your physical state so much? Because he said, before he got stressed out, depressed, all that stuff, he was kind of like killing life. And then he got into this state where he probably just got into his own head, started feeling like that, turned to food, and it was game over from there. And those wrists, just like this. There you go. Yep. I bet she's a pretty good trainer, though. Just like all things considered, if he went in there with a guy that was like super buff, I feel like it might even be a little more intimidating. You feeling a burn? Good because it would mean I'm not learning how to do this. And that's a type of setback that's really hard for me to recover from. Go ahead and step on the scale when you're ready.
there's definitely a learning curve. We don't understand how to diet, do everything properly. You're going to get it wrong a bunch, but it seems like he's starting off good, so I don't think he's got much wrong so far. I was supposed to lose 60 pounds by today, and if I did, I feel certain he'll prove me for weight loss surgery. I'm at Dr. Nell's to see where my weight's at. At my last appointment, I weighed 590 pounds. And Dr. Now told me to lose 60 pounds. So if I did that, then I should weigh 530 or less today. And Bro, I hate how long they take just to just show me the damn scale. Like, I need to know if he effed up with the air calories, the scale gremlins got him. I gotta know. Just praying that I did that so I can get approved for weight loss surgery. Damn, that's about where I was when they cut my stomach out. I might have even been a couple pounds heavier than that. I forget if it was 540 or 545 they cut mine out. We're going to room five. Dang, that's shorter than Mark. I'm still happy that I lost as much as I did, but that's too far off for me to feel all the way good about it. Muscle weighs more than fat, so we're just going to chalk it up to that. We gotta be delusional. Even if we've only lifted weights three times, you put on at least 10 pounds of muscle. That's how that's how fat logic works. You're down to 539, no? Yes, sir. All right, that's great. So you lost 52 pounds over the last two months. Yes, sir. You do any exercise? Yes, sir. I work out. Just tell me he, you're, he's approved, doctor, now. And then tell him to go to therapy, because that's usually what you would say if somebody told you they eat because they're depressed. Out of the gym, and my trainer helps me work out two days a week. Okay, that's good. So, what is your goal weight? My goal weight would be 200 pounds. Mm, that's too high. Your goal weight. Really? Because my goal weight was 260. I bumped it to 250 when I figured out I had to be that to skydive. I'm 6'4, and they usually say you'll lose like 20, 30 pounds loose skin. So, I probably would end up around 220. So, I think it's a fine one for me. It is 167. 167? Okay, then I will shoot for that. So that means that you got a 400 pound to lose, huh? How tall is he, though? Because 160, maybe if he's like 5'8 or something, but damn. That's going to be a while, but I got it. All right, I think realistically, the only way you're going to get to that is weight loss surgery, okay? So now that you lost weight and you stay focused, uh, I'm gonna approve you for weight loss surgery. So we'll. I like the little fist pump there. He, he deserves to be proud of himself. That's a lot of weight to lose in three months. So way to go, my man. Go ahead and run some testing on you. And if everything looks good, we'll schedule you for next month. So how did that sound? That sounds awesome. great. All right. Good. Sounds like I'm going to go have a pizza party. No, don't have a pizza party. But yes, great. I'm super proud of this guy, 100%. Continue with your eating habit and weight loss and continue to lose what you're losing right now. Even tighten up a little bit more and cut all the extra calorie off of your diet. Increase your activity and get yourself ready for weight loss surgery. But the problem with that lies in the people that want to eat a whole bunch of stuff before they realize they can't have it anymore which is what this guy did and got his canceled but uh i'm just a world-class idiot so hopefully he don't do that today is the day of my surgery and my brother kenneth came through to take me since our parents are working and i'm grateful that he's here for me today is it the brother you hated because he was born after you because sounds like he's a pretty nice brother so i can share this moment with someone and so I don't have to be alone. Oh, damn. I had to do it alone because it was uh, the Rona going on. Nobody was alive. Although, I had the nurses, at least. They used to play rock, paper, scissors to see who got to come check on me because I used to joke around with them. I'm excited for what this day means to me, and I'm proud of myself for making it this far. But I'm also a little scared. Because anytime you have surgery, something could go wrong. And even 
definitely, but I think he's going to get some kind of bacterial infection from not changing the damn shorts. I can't get over that. I know I've been losing weight. Doctor now says there's still a risk factor because of how big I am. You okay, dude? Yeah. It's cold as hell and yeah. It's pretty cold. Really? Because we're insulated and we're on my 600 pound life and you want us to turn the damn thermostat up? That sounds like sacrilegious. Hi. Hi. My name is Vanna. I'm one of the nurses that's working here. I'll be getting you ready for this procedure, okay? Okay. Over the course of last week, me and my family did talk about a lot of things about the surgery and how everybody's excited. Even I should be excited that this is... Ooh, we got a little show there. Also, that nurse looks like the one that practiced the catheter on me. I'm still pissed. The whole big change in my life. You waking up? Yeah. All right, your surgery went very well, okay? You're in recovery room. Awesome. Why am I just now noticing that he has, like, some kind of twilight wolf-type blanket on? Okay, so we're gonna get you upstairs pretty soon. He did not just go for a fist bump and Dr. Now ignore him. Oh, the cringe. And you know, let you rest, and after four hours, we get you up, walk, and run. Okay. And you get up and do some walking, and you can have some liquid, okay? Thank you. All right, everything went very well. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm going to tell you right now, he's not going to want that liquid. They're going to make you drink the protein shakes or whatever, try to keep them down. It don't feel good, man. You're going to have to sip on one protein shake for like four hours, and every little sip is going to feel like hell on earth. You know what those bruises are on his stomach? They're the little shots you they make you take home. I can't remember if you have to take them two or three times a day, but you gotta jab yourself in the stomach so you don't get blood clots after the surgery. It's been about two weeks since my surgery, and I'm feeling pretty good. When I came home from the hospital, I started staying out at my mom and dad's place. So we moved out of the storage shed? Uh, I guess he probably needed a little bit of help after surgery. So they can keep an eye on me and make sure I have everything I need. But it was only about a day or two that I really needed help. And even after day one, I was able to get up and move around some. The Ooh, put your robe on, pimp. Go and dust your shoulders off a little bit. The good news <laughs> is, ever since the surgery, my hunger has pretty much gone away. But it's weird because I don't really like eating anymore. And that was one. Bro, it sucks. I hated it after surgery. To go from something that brought you so much joy to no longer liking it is why people that tend to have depression get like clinically depressed once they can't eat anymore, which is way worse, my understanding of it. But I'm surprised that he did not make him go to therapy. I thought for sure. My favorite things before surgery. It's like I don't know myself for something. Or like being a different person. But I know that it's good for me. Doctor now says I've already eaten enough for the next four years. So I guess... So doctor now to say, you don't need to eat for four years. You're way too damn fat. I guess that's enjoyment that I've already used up. It's been a little bit difficult because at first I wasn't able to exercise. And that's been my main thing to do to avoid the boredom. But I've been able There's a lot of studies that show that like exercise will get your endorphins flowing and all that, make you feel way more happier. I'm able to start playing video games again. And I think it's going pretty well. Because I've only been doing it a little bit. And my friends online have all been really supportive of what I'm going through. And they're all Really? Online game supportive? I guess I ain't played in a while because they would have made fun of me to all hell if they knew I was 600 pounds. All really excited for me that I got weight loss surgery. My depression and anxiety are in pretty good shape too. They finally took all the food off the blackboard. It says something different. Overall, I'm feeling pretty positive, but it still feels like something's missing. And I'm hoping... Your stomach. Duh, they just cut the shit out. Ooh, 
69. Look at him go. Look at him go. Way to go, Luke. Yay. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. okay, we're going to go to room five. Okay. It's a little bit... He already looks like a different guy, but like we said earlier, food is like his companion throughout his whole life, so he's probably struggling a little bit. More than I expected. I was pretty excited, pretty stoked about it. But at the same time, I'm also ready for more. I feel incredibly great, actually. I feel wonderful. I, I... Nice. So many people get like a little bit of weight loss behind them when they're this size and they start to get complacent and they just think it'll keep going that way. It doesn't. That's why you see so many people like start to like fail and work back in the other direction. You really got to stay on top of it. It sucks. I'm so sick of dieting. It's not even funny. That's what I'm ready to see more drop off. You're down to 469 today. Mm -hmm. So actually, you're 150 pounds lighter than the first day I saw you. Yeah. So how do you feel? I feel wonderful, actually. Has your depression continued to improve? Yes, sir. Great. Are you All right. Well, I guess maybe not. That's what I was worried about this whole time. But 150 pounds and what has it been, like four months or something? Maybe five months. I don't know. I forget. Are you able to do a lot more at this point? Yes, sir. I'm able to do a, little, a lot more than I used to. I wasn't able to move around or lift weights as easily as I can now. That's great. Well, you're doing good. And if you stay on track, in about three months, probably get in 300. And that time, we can take a look and see what is the potential for getting some extra skin off. And Damn. They told me to get all the way down to where I am now, so I should be getting, like, that kind of surgery pretty damn soon. But, uh, what? Three hundred? That seems pretty early. You got this large apron of the skin hanging in front of your abdomen. The more weight you lose, the more hanging become, and sometimes it become an issue with your ability to exercise. And if that start being a problem, then we look at into the possibility of doing extra skin removal. Everyone kind of ends up with that. It's just the way it kind of falls, lands, all that stuff. You got the little fupa flapjack thing going on down there. It's bound to happen. We were 600 effing pounds. I just choose to look at it as like proof that I've worked kind of hard. But life's a battle of perspectives. However you want to look at it. Some people would fall apart over it. Okay. Okay. And a year from now, you're going to be under 200 pounds and much lighter. So how do we, life is going to change from being 600 plus pound to 200? Life is going to be drastically different. Completely different. It's going to be... That's right. You're going to be able to make the beast with two backs instead of playing with some flapjacks. I mean, amazingly different. I can't wait. I really can't wait. So what is your goal in your life? My goal is to... Bag of baddie. I want to be able to get a job. I want to be able to move out of my family's house and get on my own. I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to... Sounds a lot less fun than my answer, but all right. Different priorities. Do a lot of things. There's a... I want to travel for the most part. I really want to get out a little bit more than I used to. And uh, lately, I, I got the motivation to go back and check out some colleges to see about going back to school. Nice. All right. So not only is he losing weight, his motivation and it's like all his ambition has just came back to him. I'm so proud of this guy. Like, I'm super freaking happy right now. And uh, hopefully be able to get a job and move out. Well, that'd be good. You have to pursue your dreams and be the best you can be. Yes, sir. OK, well, keep it up and you won't be able to do all that soon. I'm looking forward to that, too. I am, too. I think we all are. Yeah. Shut up, you babysitter banshee. We know you don't want him to ever leave you. You said it earlier. <laughs> well, I'm proud of your progress and your family is supporting you. And I'm sure within a year, we're going to get you under 200 pounds. All right. I'm okay. To it. In a year? What is Marvel Universe are we living in? I'm here to see an advisor. I've always liked working on computers. And I always did pretty well in school, too. The only thing that kept me back from pursuing a career like this was my weight. And now we're at community college. You know what I called community college? I called it the 13th grade always. But uh, I went there, and then I got caught plagiarizing a paper, and I just left, never checked my email, never went back. I don't know what happened. But uh, thanks for them friggin' student loans, because I didn't do anything with that shit. 
So now that I'm getting that under control, it feels like that I'm finally getting a shot to redo the stuff that I messed up because of my eating habits. A little bit of a lift in. Okay. The other day, I had a bit of a setback. Not with my eating, I still haven't wanted to eat that much. It was with my video gaming. I was on a- Damn, we relapsed on the World of Warcraft. That's crazy. Also, we're back with She-Hawk. That lady still intimidates me a little bit. Because I think she could choke me out in ways I've never even thought of before. ...mission with some of my friends. And it turned into a really long quest doing some raiding. And I forgot about something I promised Megan I would do. And she got really upset. And rightfully- <gasps> No. I had a girl break up with me because I just ignored her for video games all the damn time. So, and it was the first time in a long time that I really messed up. And my behavior had a negative effect on someone I cared about. Because I was playing so long and I lost track of time. It do be like that sometimes, but uh... All in all, he's a good guy though. Even if he just forgot one little thing, we can give him a pass on that. It made me think about going back to the way I was, and it really scared me. So today I'm going to work out extra hard with my trainer, because I need to feel like I'm in control of my journey again. What do you mean by that? <laughs> I'm kidding, but uh, Hammer Curl Hoo-Ha over here, she's still intimidating, guys. She's gorgeous, whatever, she's intimidating at the same time. Perfect. All right, you know we do that bad boy. Okay. Control your breathing and just stay leaning forward, okay? There you go. I still have way too much to accomplish and far too much to do. And I need to prove to myself all this is not just temporary, but I'm making permanent changes to my life. That's going to last. Damn, he's about to pelt himself in the fupa. But, uh, good exercise. He's obviously committed to getting this work in. So I'm, he's, I'm proud of him. I've said that a bunch, but I mean it. All right, John, I got the eight gig in there. Okay. I'm gonna go out to lunch. Okay, great. I'll call the customer to come pick it up. All right, cool. He's gotta feel a lot better just being out of the house, working, doing things on his own, because you really feel trapped, man. And it, until you've lived it like that, you just wouldn't understand. You know, my dad doesn't like the video games I play because of the way you- You didn't have to do sideways through the doorway already? Damn it. I did the fupa shuffle way longer than that. You die and come back to life. He says that's not right because that's not the way it is. And I used to think he was just being old fashioned. But since I've been on this journey, I kind of know what he means now. Because when I was 600 pounds, it was like I was almost dead. Yeah, you got one foot in the grave and another on a banana peel, but I understand what the dad's saying, but that's such like a... Just let you play some damn video games. That was his happy place. And now that I got my life back, I can see just how precious it is. And how my dad might think that dying over and over in a video game is the wrong idea to send about how important life is. Alright, well, he's still... A little bigger so he's gonna have to like steer steer with his stroke game here pump right go left pump left go right just hump the steering wheel i still disagree about the gaming but i can see his perspective more now i had a good productive morning at work and right now i'm on my way to the park to have lunch a morning of work and lunch at the park was not possible a year ago you would be amazed at the things you take for granted just because you can't do them anymore. And, like, you guys go out and do them every friggin' day, but you would be amazed. I really like the fact that I can be outside and mobile now. I definitely wouldn't risk going down a tube slide yet because you might get stuck, and, uh, yeah, we don't want to do that. Now that I'm out in the world and I joined the workforce... I might be too tired to get out of bed some mornings. But I remember what it was like when I had no job and no hope. And then I- You just call in sick on those days. I worked a telemarketing job for like six months. 
I probably made five phone calls. And they almost made me employee of the month. I was that good at pretending to have conversations with myself. Like, I was, I was world class. People would get, like, follow-up phone calls. And they're like, what the hell are you talking about? It, but they, in my imagination, they'd already agreed to what I said. I'm up and going and ready to face the day. Because I've got a whole future ahead of me now. I'm not just facing one day, I'm facing all of them. Nice, we got reinforced benches. This is made for 600 pound life. And even in the days when the sun is not so shiny and bright, I'm okay with it because I'm alive and I'm so grateful for that. And now that I can't, I want to do it all. That's right, Lucas, shine bright like a diamond, my friend. I really like you, buddy. I want to travel and see the world a bit. And I want to go to South Korea where the technology is great. I want to meet new Like technology, you, you should try out North Korea. I hear they're killing new it. people and date and maybe have a family of my own. I know that it won't all be easy. And some days it will be harder to face my demons than others. But now that I made Gonna have to steer clear of the Dorito demon, my friend. Also, I thought about doing this Margaret episode, but somebody told me it was just way too sad and it wouldn't be that fun. It this far, I feel ready to take on just about anything. All right, well, that's it for Lucas. Finally, a positive one for a change because you guys said I'd do too many negative ones. But uh, Lucas killed it, man. He's ready to take on his new life, ready to take on the next raid or anything in real life. And uh, he's got a job. He turned everything around, man. Uh, it's nice to see, man. Because a lot of times you see people struggle, myself included, out of the gate. And he kind of just killed it. So I'm really hoping that he continued to go in the right direction and live the life that he really wanted. I'll try to see if there's any update on him or something I could show you guys. But uh, that's it. Follow my Instagram, Twitter, my TikTok. It's all Shauna Steele with some underscores between it. So, uh, alright guys. Take her easy. If she's easy, take her twice. See ya.